burial grounds would be nice. It's time for Must Have Seen TV, the podcast dedicated to the sitcoms of the 20th century. From I Love Lucy to News Radio, I am your TV god, Barb Hardly. And uh, when I'm a boy, Brett White, I'm a senior reporter producer for Decider.com. Say hello to the Brian Keith, to my Sebastian Cabot. Sebastiana Cabot? Uh, Ethan K. <laughs> hello, Ethan. Hello, Barb. It's good to see you again after an unfortunate hiatus. We have to acknowledge this right at the top. We have not recorded in a while. There was personal stuff. Oh, God. Um, Quite a bit of personal stuff. Um, yes. We are back in the saddle, so to speak. Uh, uh, appropriate for today. <laughs> um, and the reason that, that Barb says that is because we have taken a challenge that was laid down over a year ago. Yeah, which I mean, was, it was like a year and a half when we first subjected ourselves to this. Yeah, it was the it was the Christmas episode of Family Affair. We we call it the Family Affair Challenge <laughs> because we watched one episode of Family Affair, a Christmas in July episode that uh, is one of the highest rated episodes of Family Affair. Yet it is all about child death and it is not funny. So Eve we plum getting that you know early dramatic role. <laughs> as a child dying in a bed um so we we put the call out there family affair i gotta say it was one of the episodes that was uh watched by quite a few people on youtube it is it is not our best but it is far from our worst and we said if if this show had to have fans it lasted for like seven seasons every what? boomer loves this show this was every boomer I talked to my my mother-in-law and she's like, oh, we used to watch. We used to go over to the neighbor's house and watch this. We used to, my neighbor had the Why? Mrs. Beasley doll. So we said there has to be an episode that is good. Yeah. <laughs> watched a terrible episode of it. Oh, no. Well, we got our, our dear friend suggested this one. Yes. Uh, our friend Jessica Pruitt Burnett. Yes. Uh, who uh, was an, uh, was a neighbor, still a friend. I'm seeing her later, uh, just, a, just a couple weeks from now. But uh, she said, it's a funny show. You should watch this particular episode, which is Family Affair, season two, episode 27, Mr. French's Holiday. Oh, boy. Uh, before we before we get into the 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 drama of this, I do want to show off the drama of my gown. Did you make this one? Because I made this one and made this one. I got to show it. Oh, God, you can see, I'm molting. The feathers are falling off of. Uh, hold on. OK. Danger of fe feathers. How much can you see? That's a lot of leg there. <laughs> hey, whoa. it's very uh, it's very Psylocke circa 2005. See? <laughs> but no, yeah, I uh, hey, I'm a seamstress now. I can't help it. A turning looks, uh, please watch on YouTube. Because if you see. if you don't see it on YouTube, it it you can't hear this dress. You no. can't hear this dress over a podcast. You have to watch it. I do think I have worn some dresses that can be heard though. <laughs> well, the 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 necklace, necklace could be yeah. heard. It's, it's it's purple. It's very big. And the bird, the ostriches that uh were these purple the purple ostriches that gave us these feathers. Uh, R.I.P. Purple Ostriches. But we do thank you for listening on whatever podcast listening app you happen to be listening to us on and watching us on YouTube. Yes. Because and... you know what? we're good looking. Oh, I'm gorgeous. I'm actually very proud of my makeup tonight because it has been a long time. It's been at least a month and a half since I've gotten into drag. So. <laughs> oh, and, and plug for uh, the season premiere of HBO's we are here, uh, premiering Friday, April 26th at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Uh, for I Am On It. <laughs> Ooh. Because this is, is it's the show where three drag queens go to small towns to uh, try to encourage the local queer communities uh, by putting on a big drag show. Uh, and it is more relevant than ever because we live in hell. And they went to my hometown of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, because... Apparently, I come from hell. They passed a whole lot of crazy laws that are uh, very uh, transphobic, dragphobic, everything phobic. 
And so I went down there and performed in an open stage drag show. Uh, Barb, Barb did. And I'm just saying, if you watch the season premiere, you might see me. You don't know yet? And you might hear me. I might know for certain, but probably cannot say because... Uh, As a member of the press, I'm privy to screeners. Oh, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm saying 9 p.m. Friday <laughs> HBO. Uh, I I'm TV now, but you have that deep background, that that deep information, deep sh throat. Sh mommy secret. Okay, God, that, <laughs> that was creepy as hell. Uh, but uh, this week we'll be traveling to March 18th, 1968. Stay away, Joe, ruled the box office, sitting on the dock of the bay by Otis, red and top the charts. And CBS aired the Family Affair episode, Mr. French's Holiday. Ethan, you must have seen Mr. French's Holiday before today. No, but I'm probably sure that everybody else in America who was alive at the time watched Family Affair, yeah. Mr. French's Holiday, because everyone seems to talk so highly of this show. If you are over the age of 55... Fair enough. 60, probably over the age of 60. Uh, yeah, you love this episode. You know it. You're you're conjuring up you're conjuring up images of Jody in your mind and you're just laughing hysterically because, oh, that little stinker. Uh, <laughs> what is our history with Family Affair? That is this section of the podcast, our yeah. history with the show. We went into our history with the show, uh, but I, I, uh, it's important to, to, to recap. Let me let me see if I can find the notes because we. We we gave it a shot. This is one of those things where we said this was this was one of the top rated shows of the time. Um, this this is definitely something that we need to cover on the, the podcast. And we were doing it as part of a a Christmas block because we, we watch yeah. um, Father Knows Best. For the 1950s. Well, and I wanted you to watch this, the the Family Fair Christmas episode, because I had been some, I had subjected myself to it, not knowing what I was getting into like a year or so before. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Ethan needs to see the Christmas episode where Jim Brady is a terminally ill child and, and dies and straight up dies. And they have to like explain to Buffy what death is. Uh, and <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, loved it. It, it was, was I, it was, I cannot, I cannot believe that, that they did that. It was, it was phenomenal how awful and unfunny it was. That was the catch is that like so much of family affairs jokes are someone, some adult saying something serious. One of the kids saying something just not funny in, but kind of in like inconsequential, just apropos of a very little and then the 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 um the laugh track goes okay it's great <laughs> we're having a good time the laugh track is the most bored laugh track i have ever heard well i feel like they even they know that they can't they can't put in the big guffaws they can't hit the big laugh button they know they can't get away with that it has to be like none of, it, none of the it jokes has to be, i feel like it's the same laugh track that they used on scooby-doo <laughs> you know, where it's like, we know this is a cartoon. There's no humans in that room. <laughs> it's very lackluster. And now I'm, I'm, I'm looking for my notes. Oh, here it is. We watched Christmas came a little early. Uh, it was season three, episode seven. Um, once again, this is, uh, if we can remind folks that Brian Keith didn't want to be on the show. So he filmed all of his blocks, it all of his scenes in thirty day blocks back to back. Uh, he shot in he he shot sixty <laughs> days per season, thir uh, thirty days at a time. And he and loved this episode because he hardly in it. He's hardly in it. <laughs> I, I believe the the same thing happened with Sebastian Cabot, who plays Mister French, where he also liked to group his scenes together because he was also doing stage at the same time and film oh god so this is a, yeah. a, a series that lasted so long and no one wanted to be on it <laughs> well and now so and i will say you know i i did watch this show a little bit when i was a child my mom loves this show because again boomers love this show um and i mean and that's the that's our history of family affair i will say this i think the family for a challenge still stands and I will take another request for a funny episode. 
But Jess we'll gave us another it. one, but we want to give open it up to other people. We'll, we'll see. Um. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this week on Must Have Seen TV, where we talk about the Family Affair episode, Mr. French's Holiday. It is the 27th episode of season two, and it was written by Lois Heyer, a woman getting it done in the 1960s writing television. There were very no. few of them. We, we love Lois Heyer, directed by Charles Burton. And here is how Freebie describes the episode. Mr. French takes a two-week vacation to the West with the others staying home. When Bill is called away to South America for work, the children end up flying out West to be with Mr. French. It makes his vacation more enjoyable. What the hell? Um, How accurate is that description? And uh, it, You can take it with a grain of salt. I think it puts a positive spin on how Mr. French actually reacted. I also think that, like, we need to talk to Freebie about what the little synopses are supposed to be. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell the entire plot of the episode. I want to uh, just mention a couple names. Lois Heyer, uh, the writer for this, it was her episode. She wrote it. This was the only episode of Family Affair that she wrote. Hmm. However, she did write 18 episodes of My Three Sons and oh. worked on and worked on. Well, it's it's hard to say because she was the credited writer on these, but but she might have been in the writer's room and just not actually credited yeah. uh, for some of these. But she is she's officially credited for 18 episodes of My Three Sons. Um, the director, Charles Barton, um, Disney fans might remember him from The Shaggy Dog. He directed that. Oh, um, did 106 episodes of Family Affair. 78 episodes of Amos and Andy, which I do not believe we are going to do on this show. It, it, but but uh, most importantly, uh, he directed six Abbott and Costello films, oh. including uh, Buck Privates and Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Well, isn't Buck Privates the first one? I believe so. So, yeah. Uh, he was he was involved with them. And Abin Costello Meet Frankenstein is, in my opinion, the best one. Uh, I need to see that. That'll be this Halloween. Oh, Bella Lugosi, um, Lon Chaney Jr., Glenn Strange as the monster. Uh, it's a little cameo by Vincent Price. Into Solid it. film. Solid film. Oh, no, no. God. I know it is interesting that you say, you know, he directed the Shaggy Dog because for some reason. Family Affair gives me live action Disney vibes. Yeah. And I don't know if it's like the film grain. It's the film it's, grain. It's the it, Brian there's some, Keith. There's something about it that feels very. This is one of the like weird movies on Disney plus that you're like, wait a second. What? 1967. An aunt becomes a mayor of a small town in Ireland. <laughs> okay. like <laughs> There's no rule that says that this bottle of water can't be the coach of a major football team. Whoa. Starring yeah. Brian Keith, probably. And uh, yeah, and Dean Jones. This yeah, is, it, was, it was the post Walt. Walt died in 66. So there was oh. still, they were still kind of working through ideas that he had that he had, you know, had germinated with him, but still feeling themselves out through the late sixties, early seventies. And he was like on his deathbed, yeah. a shaggy dog, uh, <laughs> a barefoot, a barefoot executive, uh, like horse, gray flannel suit, make it work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, I th like this episode starts with uh man they just ju it's like star wars a new hope we jump right into the deep end it's like mr french is already packing he is already on the way out <laughs> and he mr french uh if you if you're not familiar with the show mr french is the domestic a butler yes. child care for uh, a character named bill uh played by brian keith who was the dad in um uh let's get together the parent trap Mm. <laughs> that's how i remember the parent trap <laughs> is by singing the song um bill has uh, taken uh custody of his three uh two two nieces and one nephew okay. sissy buffy and jody their parents should go to jail um <laughs> sissy's in college uh jody and buffy no, are no, about, no, no, no. Like, she's in college well, 
Okay, I don't know how if old she... is she this season because her being in college negates the entire premise of this episode. She might be in, okay. She might be in high school. She was in college. The actor, um, the actor Kathy Garver was in college when they filmed this. Okay. So she might have been. Um, well, she might I have, still think I don't. I don't know. But it, the kids it, are definitely it, in elementary school. Yes, they're little ones, right and left. And uh, and I I love that um Brian Keith. Uh so two things. First of all, yes, Brian Keith, uh sexy, very handsome. Um ooh, like you know, Barb would uh climb that man <laughs> like a tree. Uh second, uh now that I'm rewatching ER and I'm in season eight, but I noticed this time Brian Keith has kind of George Clooney energy. Yeah, it's Imagine like this, George... like this, like disheveled, handsome, kind of, kind of like head down, like oh, you know, like okay, oh, the kind of mumbly energy. I think the best way to describe Brian Keith is a man who sounds like his mouth is full of cigarettes, even when it's not full of cigarettes. Oh, what a dream! Yeah, no, he <laughs> mumbles everything, and I love how many, how many. How how big a deal phone calls are on this show? Because I feel like there were a lot of phone calls in the Christmas one, too. So it's like you've got a guy who, again, whose mouth is just <laughs> Marlboro factory. What going to do out this with, with Byron Doing Murphy. a lot of one-sided telephone conversations. <laughs> um, but no, like he's like, Sebastian Cabot, Mr. French is very much like, do I need to take all, both, both, all two weeks at once? I can stay, you know, etc. I feel so, you know, he feels responsible for this family that he's taken care of and he doesn't want to but it's like no 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 you saved up these two weeks you go boy you go to the old west and see if it's just like buffalo bill told your dad or something yeah buffalo mr french is is british and uh when buffalo bill came over to england with his traveling show he spoke to mr french's father and mr french's father was very excited and <laughs> and passed that enthusiasm down to his son aka mr french uh who wants to go see museums and burial grounds and churches of native and... americans like he went, he's yes. like he's going out to the old west so yes yeah, so like trigger warning spoiler warning sensitivity warning oh boy Oh boy, 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 boy! Are we dealing with a 1968 frame of reference for yeah. Native Americans? And wow, it is. I, you know, I forget. And this also existed when we were kids because we grew up on the media of the past. Right. But so we also grew up seeing just a lot of like Looney Tunes, old sitcoms, old movies where it's just like. Native Americans are treated as like xenomorphs, you know, <laughs> there's like a, a, or the Chitari in Avengers, just like a nameless force for like, ooh, they're going to get you. They come in droves, like just very. Yeah. Native wild. American is not the word that they used for no, also. Yeah. The, no, no, no. The, the, them. Which I feel like uh, has been maybe reclaimed, but I'm not going to use it. I don't know. Yes. Uh, um, it. it, it, it it is an interesting reminder of just like how from like the 50s and 60s, just like Westerns. And also, uh, did you do the research on? Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it later when I, I th you if you did the research, I, I appreciate I did not do any research, baby, except for, for um, um, so yeah, he's going to the old West. Little Jody comes in. Uh, who is just. Little Jody looks like if the Lucky Charms mascot, but a child. <laughs> uh, missing various teeth. Um, red hair. Um, he he st later in life starred in A Talking Cat. Oh, which is... wait. Did he die recently or is he still alive? He's still alive. Oh, John whoa. Uh, Johnny Whitaker is still alive I, as far okay, as Buffy, I know. Buffy died. Did Sissy also die? I, no, yeah, Sissy I is still alive. So okay, but Buffy alive. died like almost like very young, like 18 or something. Yeah. Kathy Garver, who played Sissy, is is still alive. Okay. Um, but yes, uh, Anissa Jones, who played Buffy, uh, died in 1976. Yeah. So I, 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 do, I want to acknowledge that while we are dragging these children to filth, we do 
recognize they had hard lives as adults. They, uh, they do them, have hard lives. Wish them well. Wish them well. Um, uh, I I did like Johnny Whitaker in A Talking Cat. Uh, okay. It was it was probably the best film that was ever shot using a fake cat mouth shot on a porn set. But just like that weird black hole, just like opening. Um, yeah, so he comes in. He's got a lot of ideas about the old West. He's worried about Mr. French having to like ride horseback and battle Native. Him. That's the other thing. I'm like, it is so nuts. What? children thought i mean where was he going like new mexico arizona yeah, like arizona like these he are was going to arizona i was like it's not yeah it's just wild to me it's just and he says do, mr french do you want to take my guns which is a very american thing to say yeah, toy guns toy guns thank thankfully um, oh but you know then he's gone right i mean he pieces out they all yeah, say goodbye he's... to him He's gone. Uh, they say goodbye. No, they don't. They say goodbye to him because they they see him out the door, and that's where I got to see the doors that had the doorknob in the middle of the door, which blows my mind every time. It's like a Hobbit kind of thing. Oh wow! It, it's I would not, live in this apartment. I love this apartment. Oh yeah, I live in this apartment. Oh, a huge it's... apartment. Because Bill is an architect. He builds buildings and particularly bridges. Bridges come up in both this episode and the last episode. He builds bridges all over the world. Famous architect. Um, but it's very hard for him to build a bridge to his niece and nephews. Because from one heart he was, to another. Because he was only filming 30 days at a time. Like all of his scenes. Y'all got. It's like y'all got 30 days. We'll bond. Then I'm gone. Uh, then I'm marrying cigarettes. And then as soon as Mr. French is gone, do we even get to see where Mr. French goes or does it immediately like Bill's out? Brian Keith is out or do we see? Well, he's They're cleaning the house. We get a little yeah. scene of everybody pitches in and does Mr. French's job, which is cleaning the house. Um, and he, the, Mr. French sends a nice postcard to say, oh, yeah. hello, I landed. Everything is fine. And of course, um, Jody asks, did he fight any Native Americans? Oh, my God. I said, no, he's at Little Bighorn, though, and that's where Custer fought the Native Americans. He's a great man. Everything's great. Yeah, just et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. Uh, we, we, get this, we get a weird cutaway to, to uh, Mr. French on a soundstage in California, which is classic old west like it's when it looks like this the, the the setting of three amigos yeah where it's just a very old church they have a couple people wandering around they have a they have an uh an extra dressed as a priest and mr french walks out of the church and then the scene ends mm -hmm. but it's a, he's it's living a, his best life it's because in 1968 alone. you couldn't show him going to the gay bar the bear harness night uh, right after that, because that's where he was headed. I know. So Mr. Mr. Cabot is also handsome, and I love everything he wears. Um, very. And dapper, as far very as, as far as we know, he was straight. He was married to the same woman uh, up for uh, from I think the mid nineteen forties up until his death. Oh, good work. Um, they they did have a daughter together. Um, but he did die of a stroke. Everyone, you know, most people here did did die. Um. <laughs> <laughs> most people do none of them are people highlanders will. as far as we know although jody might be looks jody. irish scottish johnny whitaker you might be able to make it happen you might be able to be <laughs> the the highlander for family affair oh god yeah man uh then we get so bill has to go bill has to leave because there's contrived. a bridge in south america that like he's got to go like hold up with his own two hands <laughs> What country in South America? We're not told. It's just South, South America. America. You know, just dart. Just throw a dart at the map. And that's where he's going. That's where he just builds bridges. Um, uh, so it, apparently it's a, it's, it's a difficult way to get there. He has to take a plane to another plane to a bus to a Jeep that gets him out into the middle of bri prime bridge building territory. Where all the water is. <laughs> well, now this is where... Okay, so no, so we, they they have to figure out what to do with the children. So first of all, Sissy is old enough to watch Buffy and Jody. 
indeed she is. Right? I mean, like, she's... Indeed. If the actress is in college, that means that the character is in high school. And... Let's I don't see, know. This... I guess you you would feel weird about like a 14 year old. No, 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 no. Here is here is the solution. Uh, traveling back in time, sitting Brian Keith down and being like, she's like 14 minimum. She's 14 to 17. If you are nervous, you apparently know a ton of people in this building. Have them come by like have Mrs. Mrs. Halloran come down and like make breakfast in the morning or like just get make sure that everything's fine and then have someone come down in the evening and have dinner with them and then like that's it yeah i'm a uh, parent i'm a mother now <laughs> <laughs> uh kathy garvey w kathy garver was either 22 or 23 when this was filmed so she was probably playing much younger like so, 16 probably yeah let's say 16 um I think your solution is is better than the solution that they came up with. Well, the reason that Bill's against this is, Sissy, you have to go to school. And that apparently is the end of the conversation. That's all you need to say for Sissy to be like, oh, yeah, I have to go to school. Why are the children not in school? We don't know. Yeah, I'm it's like, not... they're both like kindergarten age, right? Well, at they least preschool. They have friends at school. We saw it in the... Oh, right. One of them died. <laughs> One of them died. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of a contrived plot. So they, they, their solution is, oh, Jody uh, can stay with his friend Peter, a.k.a. Richard, because they, they, they messed up the name a couple of times. They went back and <laughs> forth. Sometimes he's Peter. Sometimes he's Richard. Oh, man. Uh, while uh, Sissy and Buffy get to go upstairs with another neighbor. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Is it then we get this is when we get to see Jody's uh one sleep overnight? And I was one. worried that I was worried we were going a uh, repeat, yes, the last time, yes. Uh, Jody wakes up ah. in a bed next to Peter Richard, and Peter Richard won't wake up. <laughs> Peter, Peter Richard is because I thought the same thing, I'm like, wait a minute. Is this yeah. another dead kid in the bed? Well, then he like he turns around and his entire face is swollen, like Captain Kirk in Star Trek in that one uh, scene, the Chris Pine, <laughs> where he's all bloated. But anyway, his mouth has like it's like he's storing nuts for winter. Yeah, he looks like Randy, the 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 ventriloquist marionette from Pee Wee's Playhouse. He's got yeah. this big yeah, thing. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, but he has mumps. Got mumps. Mumps is contagious. Mumps is bad. Is contagious as hell. They got uh, Jody the, the f out of there. Yeah, Jody is now back at the apartment, um, and Sissy, Sissy's solution is Mr. French. Well, he works for us. He better cut his. He should cut his this vacation asshole. short. <laughs> you tell that she's like, I'm a college kid. I don't understand how the world works. And that people are people. Yeah, it's they have this yeah. great. They have this great exchange where Jody says, that'll spoil his vacation. And Sissy goes, he won't mind. <laughs> mm. Oh, Sissy, you need it. to learn how the world works. She's like, oh, man, we're living it up with my super rich uncle. Like, I know yeah. I know what privilege is. He, he better get back here. When I snap my fingers, Mr. French better cancel his vacation. But then Jody, who has not been tempted by the spoils of privilege, is like, I don't want him to ruin his vacation. I don't want to be the one that ruins his vacation. So the 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 insane solution they come up with. The insane to, solution. Is to, okay, so, the, oh, okay. It was like, the, the back the truck up of like, we <laughs> cannot leave the like six-year-olds and the 14-year-old alone. Cannot. They got to go somewhere. But what we can do is drive the little six-year-old to JFK <laughs> or whatever. Uh, God, what was it called for JFK? Uh, or oh, maybe, I, I don't know. And just like, I have to look like, it up because it's going to kill me. Just like, scoot, 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 scoot onto American Airlines, little Jody. Pan Am. Uh, we're going to fly. Idlewild. Idlewild. Yeah. yeah. Drive him yeah. out to Idlewild. <laughs> Drop him off at the gate. And then just like shoot him across the country. 
<laughs> with his guns because he with brought his, his toy t- guns with him. What a different time. T- times were completely different. I this it the 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 terminal where they drop where he landed was about the size of this room. Yeah, it was set, but it, it was tiny. It was microscopic. It was wings size. I guess in 1968, like maybe because in the 60s, owing up until like you know 2001, you could walk all the way to the gate. So I guess like the logic is, I can walk my child up to the gate where he then gets on a hermetically sealed tube and is almost like shot like a tube at the bank <laughs> all the way to Arizona where he comes out and is immediately at Sebastian Cabot. So like nowadays it would be like, let them go. And then like, well, fingers crossed little Jody can get through security alone. Can then, you know, yeah. find, find the Aubon Pan to eat <laughs> and find the gate. <laughs> And then who knows, like, yeah, it's much more dangerous now. So I guess it makes a little sense. It was easier for them. Uh, French gets the call while he's at dinner alone. Kind of sad. But you know what? I wouldn't mind being alone by myself traveling. I know. I would love that I want to do. I mean, some of my favorite. This is so stupid and very me but some of my like favorite international or like travel moments are when i get to go do set visits for work um like when i got to go up to toronto to visit the set of the boys and i realized that the hotel they put us up in was across the street from a shopping mall and that is where i ate all of my meals and it was like <laughs> i'm gonna go that food court calling my name and i loved it i loved it i, I just last year i went to san antonio by myself um for a the the society of biblical literature conference Much had a like great mr. time just like mr french in the south mm-hmm. i went to the museum of the the of the west the cowboy museum See? um but it was fantastic i had a great time i'm gonna do the same for san diego this year oh, um great. it's just nice to get out <gasps> jody french arrives is- mr french yeah. has an itinerary that itinerary just needs to be put through a shredder immediately because okay here is the one time I laughed. It was when like Mr. French was listing all of the like museums. Like we're going to go see the burial grounds. We're going to go see the, and then I can't even remember what Jody's response was, but Jody's response made me laugh. I just like, Oh, great. Oh yeah. Like, I, I thought that was funny. I was fuming because this is a man that put his itinerary together it was step by step. He, this was his dream vacation that he mm-hmm. wanted to go on since he was a boy. His father talked it up, and he's just like, "Oh, I'm, we're going to go see the burial grounds, and then we're going to see this museum, and then that museum." And all it takes is this little shit, Jody, to be like, uh, "I don't want to do that." And Mister French is like, "Okay, we won't do that." It is also wild because like Jody's whole thing is like, I want to see Native Americans. Like I want to just, you know, just strap on my little guns and run around in a ghost town. Um, yeah. I, I, I thought he would be interested in go seeing a museum of like. Here, the thing that you want to see here. Yeah. You know, I mean, probably not like well-preserved or like taken care of or accurate or gotten well, by any kind of ethical means. But you know, like, like I, I would be I, interested in a museum as a kid. I would be interested in a museum. I love museums as a kid. This is, I can also imagine that if you were to t- say to a kid, Hey, do you want to go to a museum? Sure. Do you want to go to a museum of native Americans? Cool. Do you want to go to see it? A, a na- museum of native American pottery art. And the kid would be like, Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Pottery <laughs> art? Like, <laughs> um, it's interesting because this was right about the same time that, maybe a little bit later, that um, Vincent Price really got into Southwestern uh, Native art and was one of the people that was kind of responsible for saying, hey, white people, this is really cool art and getting that spread around. Um, Work Vincent a- Price. Yeah, just one of those little strange little things I picked up over time. Um, So instead, Mr. French is like, there's a ghost town, which is code for 
the set of gun smoke that they aren't using or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, <laughs> so they go. They go. <laughs> I don't have a lot of notes for this because not much happened. They go yeah, to this yeah. ghost town, which is shot <laughs> shot so poorly. They are filming <laughs> in one direction only. They do not show anything to the right or behind the camera. It is focused solely on a stagecoach. Yeah, and they get on the stagecoach. Jody gets up and gets off of it. Uh... They pull out the guns because uh, they're afraid that a million Native Americans are on the warpath, which is just like, oh, See? my God, what did 50s and 60s Chitari. show us? It's just like, or like putties, like... <laughs> Uh, and yeah, imagine just like a bunch of like putty patrollers coming out like boo, around Mr. Cabot or Mr. French. I would but love to see Mr. French like totally body some. Be... I would like Mr. French to be uh, the big head in Zordon, right? Zordon yeah. to be the big head in Power Rangers. Uh, like, okay, Rangers, someone's at the playground fighting again. <laughs> Uh, well, Jody would be the orange ranger, we could tell just because of that hair. Just put, just, just leave him at the base, put him in like a coat closet or something, like and let him alpha five anyway. Uh, alpha. so yeah, then a bunch of Native Americans do show up and they like are like, oh my god, but it turns out they're actors and they're on break. And Jody's like, oh, this is cool, I'm seeing like real Native Americans. What do y'all eat for lunch? Tuna. What do tourists eat for lunch? Also tuna, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ethan, were any of these actors actually Native American or were they all Italians? It's hard to say. Uh, the, <laughs> the 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 only Native American that that spoke that had any lines was uh, Dennis Cross, and I looked him up, and he did. It's hard to say because he did a lot of Western TV yeah. and movies, but he never played Native Americans. Yeah. So I'm like, is this? I, it's hard. I I don't know. He, he he's not he's not a big enough name that he has like a huge Wikipedia page with his whole his whole backstory. Yeah. yeah. But I did look him up, and he, again, he was on multiple episodes of Gunsmoke, playing multiple characters, none of whom were Native Americans. And any it's of the movies he played, so, no, he is just he's so just so funny. It's so like in retrospect, just wild to just have like Jody. Oh my god. God, real Native American. Well, I mean, I guess to Jody, yeah. Uh, white people playing Native Americans are real Native Americans to Jody because that's all he sees <laughs> <laughs> on TV and movies. So, Iron God. Eyes Jody was an Italian man. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I think the 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 actors were being very generous to Jody and Mr. French. They're like, yeah. "Oh, we came over here to eat our lunch. Would you like to eat your lunch with us?" And they're like, "Oh my God, fantastic! We're we're eating here." And and then he then he says, "Would you like to join us on the movie set and see how a movie set runs?" And Mr. French, of course, is like, oh, we had a museum we were going to go see. I don't know why I sound like Mr. Bean, but, <laughs> but yeah. he does, you know, uh, and he, you can tell that Mr. French wants to go to this museum because his morning's already shot. He was supposed to go yeah. to a burial ground and a museum. Didn't do either. And but now he has to kind of he has to kind of, you know, kiss the kiss the ring of his <laughs> lawyer. Of Jody, yeah, of Donnie Whitaker. Uh, so it's they're like going that to Twilight Zone episode where, like, the little kid has the omnipotent power. Yeah, Bill Mooney. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, don't make him mad. He'll blink you out of existence. I have. I will say, to Jody's defense, getting to go hang out on the movie set is pretty cool. Yeah, and to Mister French, like, understand that this is probably a first for you too. Mm -hmm. You've been to museums before. He You're probably doesn't like films. He prefers the theater. Um, oh, I enjoy some cinema, but very little of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Fr Mr. French are also wearing a three-piece suit at all times looking in the southeastern, uh, southwestern heat. Amazing. And this is where I want to, at some point, I, I want to try to do an article or an interview about, I don't understand why suit construction, just like, not even like removing style from everything. Just the way the suits are constructed and the materials they use somehow make 
compare like what Mr. French is wearing to like what's worn on like suits or whatever. There's something just like very polyester, very shiny, very just like cheap looking about all modern suits on television. It's very, very JC yeah. Penny, you know, whereas like Mr. Cabot, uh, Mr. Mr. Sebastian Cabot suits look spectacular. And again, I don't know if that's like HD versus SD. Like there's a lot of factors at play here. I just wanted to boil this down to is Mr. French is serving looks, honey. He has all the accessories. He's got the oh, chains. Yeah. He's got the cufflinks. He's got the the vest. Those things no, aren't necessarily shown I, on, on regular television. And I nowadays. just I inherited, and by inherit I mean took from my dad's nightstand uh, my grandfather's mason ring that I should probably show you at some point. I um, had a mason ring, and it it looked like if you remember in. Um, national treasure when harvey keitel shows off his ring i was like oh that's a ring that i like and i got one that looked like that so it had a big black stone on it and the square encompasses and i wore it for a while as like a pinky ring and or no no i wore it just on my right hand it wasn't a pinky ring and one day i swung my hand too hard uh -oh. as i was coming into my apartment and i smacked the ring on my door and it shattered the stone oh man Fuck, and I never got another mason ring after that. Wow, well, this one's really tiny. It's really silver tiny, got some diamonds in it. Ooh, and you sure it was his? Well, now I'm like, was it my grandmother's? Because they were in Eastern Star. Yeah. Which is... Whatever, I'm wearing it on my pinky. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, no, no shame But it has, like, the mason insignia on one of the sides, and then, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this is where the plot thickens, where... The the family that Joe Buffy and Sissy are staying at, they're like, oh, my God, we've never had the mumps or something like. Yeah, the family they're, says they're worried. Yeah, the transitive property of mumps is yeah. that Peter Richard got mumps. Jody was exposed to it. Jody exposed was exposed to Sissy and Buffy. Sissy and Buffy was were exposed to uh, Sharon. Um, yeah played by Diane Mountford and just one great scene. Fantastic work. Um, how many uh, episodes was she in? She was in five episodes of okay, family. We got, Affairs. we got a recurring, yeah. um, yeah. vaccinate your children. People. Also the other, the other recurring character is Betty Lynn who played Miss Lee, who was Bill's, uh, Bill's aide. Oh yeah. Um, She's in a lot of these she's in a lot of these scenes talking with Bill, especially. But she's also kind of like, oh, we'll just call Miss Lee. She'll figure it out. She was the go between yeah. all of Sissy's conversations with Mr. French. Um, she's very well known for playing uh, Don Knotts's girlfriend in the Andy Griffith show. Oh, we love a plus. Yeah. Good, good, good. So um, little fun, little fun trivia. So now this is where two more. Like paint cans on a staircase, two more obstacles come swinging at Mr. French. <laughs> now we have to bring Mr. French back, or we can go out there ourselves. Fuck his vacation. Yeah. Fuck and, his I, vacation he saved up for. This is the other thing of like, again, like, sissy, you were old enough. You're definitely old enough to take care of one mop. Exactly. Not two, like you could take a girl two, one, whatever. They get on the plane, they fly out there, and um, why do I keep doing this? And just like DJ coming back from a uh, vacation with Steve, or or Ross coming back from uh his work trip with Julie, Sissy found a man on that flight. Sissy found a man named Randy Stone. Um, Did they give him a full name? He he has a full name. He's Randy Stone. He's played by Danny Lorenz. Um, only did like a handful of TV Anything? episodes. Nothing, nothing fantastic. Um, but she's like, oh, he's a local. He knows all the hot stuff to do. <laughs> so while she is, um, <laughs> how old is she? She's she's twenty three, playing seventeen. He's play. He's in real life is actually twenty four. Playing like like looking like he's thirty nine. He yeah. is like, <laughs> he is rough looking. Um, <laughs> Cigarettes. Yeah, is oh. I, hard living of the nineteen sixties. Um, so of course, uh, they want to go to Indian ruins and burial grounds. 
well, Mr. Mr. French wants to go to. And um, then uh, Buffy gets a repeat of what Jody was like. Oh, yeah. Burial grounds would be nice. Like. I I I I chuckled at that as well of just like them kids being like yeah those burial grounds sound nice <laughs> I just looked at them like you are totally ruining this man's vacation with your fucking privilege your fucking <laughs> money that is controlling this man's life like no no yeah. you stay here at the airport Mr. French will be back for you in a couple of days after he sees these burial grounds that he's been waiting to see his whole life there's a Panera. Go get it. That's where you <laughs> eat from now on. Oh god, Panera oh, is so good right now, though. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, uh, yeah. So they go to the discotheque. Yeah, that, that blows my mind. Okay, let's th- let's take it one step back and just have the suggestion that Sissy makes, which is if they don't want to go to the burial grounds and the Indian ruins, there's the grooviest discotheque. An all ages discotheque an all ages discotheque that serves food. I don't think that's the grooviest one. No, no, I don't think Um, so. But, but Mr. French, because he's British, I don't know. He's British and And employed rock the boat. And he's employed and wants to stay employed, says, I've always wanted to see a genuine Western swinging discotheque. Uh, and so they go. He is it's fascinated like an Italian by, like, restaurant with a dance floor. Yeah, it, it feels very much. It's very happy days feeling or like it, it's it's. Yeah, it's it, weird. It's got the uh, I've been watching the uh, the monkeys. And because I got the the box set for my birthday and Mm. in one of those scenes, it was like, oh, we're going to this fancy club. And I'm like, "Okay, there are tables there with red and white checkered tablecloths and like (laughs) nonsense hanging on the Pizza Hut got its start as a discotheque. Swinging. Groovy's groovy's discotheque in the Southwest. It's a discotheque. Yeah. And so, Uh, yeah, they're dancing. Mr. Mr. French likes the disco like he's enjoying it. He's bopping in his seat. He's he's not out of his chair. No. Uh no. He, he's hungry. He's suggesting like he had plans to go to a restaurant. They're like, they have hamburgers and fries here. Sissy's like, let let Rocco or whatever is it. Let him order. Randy. Let Randy order. And it's just like you're Randy. not at like you're not like a French restaurant where you don't you can't read the menu. You're he's ordering you guys burgers and fries. <laughs> Like, I don't think he needs the responsibility for the whole table. I bet I I really hope that that Randy got to like at least second base with Sissy. Uh, based yeah, on, based I mean on someone. I mean, do you think it'd be funny if like Burial Grounds was like the name of a uh, a drag queen that Mister French is just like <laughs> dying to like? I need to get with Burial Grounds. Or, or actually, Burial Grounds. Mariel Grounds. Mariel Grounds. Yeah, Burial. That that's. A, That'd be a good name. It could also be the name of a really great goth club. Uh Uh-huh. And they're like, oh, Mr. French, you wanted to see uh, some burial grounds? Well, down the street, we've got burial grounds, too. And they go in, the music's all like... It's like people in leather and cages. Yeah, like, uh, the the, the blood rain star, the blood (laughs) spring. Everyone's dressed in, like, black wedding dresses, and they're playing, like, Sisters of Mercy, and it's like, ooh, you know... (laughs) Oh God! Yeah, I mean that's more interesting than what happens, which is a fully lit place where they play royalty-free, like, yeah, dude, music and and Jody and, and Buffy are like, yay, we're hopped up on caffeine from these God. sodas we're drinking. I mean, it's like they're at Chuck E. Cheese. Like, sissy, what is your idea of a hot discotheque? Why would you drag your family here? Like, there's no, under no circumstances, like. If I had a fucking dollar too for every time Jody said, "Oh boy," uh, I, I'd uh, retire because he says it. That's he says it all the time. It's just and then weird. uh, yeah, they eat there. He tears up the schedule. He's like, he "Oh, it's and so no, no. Then they go back home. Wait, and <laughs> how does it end? Uh, Mr. Mr. French tells them like. Mr. Bill's there first. Mr. French brings yeah. comes in with them, and they're like, "Oh, we went to the this discotheque, and we went to this ghost town, and there was also mention of a doll show, which, oh yeah, 
uh, did we didn't <laughs> thankfully <Yeah>. didn't see. <laughs> Could, couldn't afford it. Bill brought presents from South America. Um, <laughs> and Mr. French just looks like looks like it just looks like someone just said, Hey, uh, you know this number? This used to be your uh, whole vacation account, and then we, it's down to zero because you spent all this money uh, on these other but people. But honestly, you have nothing. You got nothing. Isn't watching Buffy and Jody really like a vacation? Every Ugh. day is a vacation here. <clears throat> Four-day work week, please. Oh, Guaranteed yeah. universal income. Oh, my God, please. Jesus. Uh, are you ready for some must-have facts? I got one for you, too. Oh, goody. Let's start with yours. So this, I want this. It's a fun little story that I love to tell. This aired on March eighteenth, nineteen sixty eight, which was the date that Mel Brooks's The Producers premiered. Oh, but so here, I, I always love telling this story about why we almost didn't get to see The Producers because no one wanted to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> so the. The movie was done by Mel Brooks, who know it was his first movie. No one knew him. No one knew Gene Wilder. And unless you knew theater, you didn't know Zero Mostel. So you have no frame of reference what this is. You don't want to go see this movie. It premieres at a 3,000 seat theater uh, in Philadelphia, where there is no one there. Mel Brooks <laughs> says there was one woman who was drunk and asleep in the front row, and that was it. So Mel Brooks is like, this movie is flopped. The, uh, the, the film studio is like, this movie's flopped. We're not going to, we're not going to do anything with this. So fast forward to, I don't know what the, how, how much later it was. I think it had to have been 1968. Peter Sellers was in the United States. He had just got, he was, he had been working on, I love you, Alice B. Toklas, which is a great film. Um, and he didn't have anything to do. He was stuck in. He didn't know enough people. He was just stuck there. And he said, I'm what I would like to do a film society. I want where we we find cla wonderful films that we want to show off and we make a bunch of food based on that uh, that film. So the first one that he so he, he calls up Paul Mazursky, uh, who's the creator of the monkeys. But he oh. also wrote. um I love you, Alice B. Toklas. And he said, you know, this is what I'd like to do. And and Mazursky, they 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 put on the, this. Uh, it's an it's an Indian film, and they get a whole bunch of Indian food, and they get marijuana laced brownies, and they have a fantastic time. And they said, Paul, you're you're going to be next. What film would you like to do? And he says, Oh, I would like to do um, uh, Vitelloni by Fellini. And we're going to have Italian food. My wife is going to cook a big pot plate of pasta. And Paul Mazursky is not British. So I'm just making him sound the British. And we're going to have <laughs> pasta and finger foods. And it, they they get to the night and his wife has this big pot of pasta and they have all this food. And Peter Sellers says, let's start Vitaloni. And Mazursky is like, I didn't order it. Did anyone order the film, this Fellini film? And now they're like, no, I thought you were going to do it. And he's like, I, I didn't. I thought someone else was going to order it. I thought I just I just named the movie and it just gets done. So they're looking at the they, they call up to the booth. Is Vitaloni up there? No, it's not. We don't got no Vitaloni. <laughs> um, and Peter Sellers is like, what do you have? And, and the guy's like, well, I got this thing. The producer's. Here, I don't know what it is, but it's up here. And, and Peter Sellers is upset. He's like, I don't want even want to see Vitaloni now. I just play something. Ten minutes into it, he's laughing his head off. The movie ends. He immediately calls up people he knows in England. It's 3 a.m. And he's like, Tomorrow we're putting out at full page ads and all the trades about this movie, the producers, how wonderful it is, how funny it is. Uh, and you can read the you can read the ads online and just being like, this is the funniest movie ever made. Go see this. And that's how Peter Sellers saved the producers. It's insane. <laughs> it's a great story. It's one of my favorite, favorite stories. And I know I just devoted a whole bunch of time on this podcast to Peter Sellers I mean, and the producers, but it's a great story. It's more riveting than this episode of a family affair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which 
was rated number four for the season. Watched by about 25 million people. Yeah, so like apparently like around this time they were doing Nielsen ratings in two week chunks. So I don't have the specific week, Uh, but uh, for that two week chunk, though, it was in the top 15 for that chunk. Wow. Definitely. Number four for the whole season, though. Wow. In terms of uh, and then other hit uh, TV episodes or shows specials that during that chunk are uh, Jack Benny and Bill Cosby had comedy specials. Uh, Andy Riffith show was number three. Number two was the Ice Capades for 1968. <laughs> and then number one was the Bob Hope special. Uh, the CBS Monday night lineup was all killer, no filler, Gunsmoke, The Lucy Show, The Andy Griffith Show, Family Affair, and then The Carol Burnett Show. Oh, those poor people who had to sit through Family Affair to get to Carol Burnett. They, Carol they Burnett. knew what they were doing. <laughs> also, oh. it is wild. Like, a Family Affair is like, the biggest show for children. Um, it's it's on very late. Uh, eight thirty yeah, nine. Yeah, it's on at nine thirty. Uh, yeah, that's that is weird. Really but that weird. should be up after. Uh... But I guess this is not the kids get to stay up late. I don't know. Um, so it is March eighteenth, nineteen sixty eight. You're not seeing the producers because no one is. What are you no. watching? <laughs> on ABC, we've got Peyton Place. Uh, the mm-hmm. episode, Dr. Rossi's brother is hiding out from trouble. Uh, Joe, oh, sorry. Dr. Rossi's brother is hiding out from trouble. Rodney and Elliot quarrel over the baby. Norman takes Joe home to dinner. And then, Joe, if you're smart, you'll not get mixed up with these clowns. I miss the days when blurbs could have opinions <laughs> on the shows. Uh, on CBS Family Affair. Vacationing in a frontier town, French suddenly becomes a Wild West nanny when the kitties descend upon him. And Oof. on NBC, you can watch the second half of The Danny Thomas Hour, part three of The Wonderful World of Burlesque with Carol Channing, Mickey Rooney, and Wayne Newton as Danny's guests and comedy assistants. What are oh, you watching? I am in that, I'm in for that Danny Thomas. Oh, yeah, I'm in for that Danny Thomas. The Wonderful yeah. World of Burlesque with Carol Channing. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna yeah. shake my assets. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a homosexual, so I'm probably watching Peyton Place. I don't know. Uh, you know, getting that <laughs> it was the, it, prime time soap, baby. Yeah, it's a a, a soap opera at nine thirty in the evening. Yeah. So when yeah. did Rosemary's Baby come out? Sixty nine. So like Ro- Mia Farrow is on the show at this point, maybe. Cause didn't yeah she went from yeah. She went from Peyton Place to Rosemary's Baby, I think. Uh, now I'm going to look up exactly when it it released because now, now I'm interested. I mean, yeah, but you know, um, I'm going to be watching Doctor Rossi's brother hiding out from town. I don't June know what 12th, Ro- June okay. 12th, 1968. So this this movie, uh, this episode of Family Affair, predated Rosemary's Baby by. Oh, like three months. Four months. Yeah. Yeah, three months. Uh, on IMDb, 36 Affairites gave this an 8.2 out of 10. An 8.2 out of 10. What do you give it, Ethan? Uh, how do you even judge something like this? Compare like, it to the Christmas episode. Did anyone die? No. no. Did they talk about people dying? No. Did it have Eve Plum? No. Which is a negative, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd give it. I'd give it like maybe a six. <gasps> Jesus. Uh, that's, yeah, that's I mean, a I little think... higher than, and that's that's probably high. That's me being being nice. I'm crazy in that. I love that Christmas episode. I think as a <laughs> chunk of television, it is delicious. It is uh, mad maddening. Uh, it's perfect. And and then this, I'm like, I don't know. 5.8? I don't know, like, just... Yeah. I don't know. It's... Uh, the, the jokes really don't land for me. The, 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 the humor is just Jody and Buffy reacting to things like precocious kids. Mm-hmm. Mr. French is, is stuffy. I, I felt bad for him for most of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Brian Keith just looks like he just he he misses that cigarette. 
He got to get that cigarette. It's off camera. He finishes the scene. He can smoke that cigarette. They're just dangling a cigarette on like a fishing pole. Yep. Like, yep. like look over here, this camera. All right, I'll press it for Vicky now. Uh, who had the must-see performance of this episode? Usually I'd say something like, oh, it was like this totally minor character, like uh, Dennis Cross as Jim Tallfeather. But I, because normally I'd be like, oh, weird characters that just show up and, and you know, have a little yeah. bit of business. But he was really bad in this. <laughs> like, all of his lines were delivered, delivered kind of like this. And then he'd say the next thing. And then they'd cut to him and he'd just hold for like a second or two. And then he'd say his line. Uh, like, uh, uh, yeah. so yeah. I, I will, I will yeah, give blew it your to, shot. <laughs> yeah. You had you had that that chance to be at nine thirty on on uh, CBS and you didn't. You know, I'd give it to I'd give it to Sissy. Okay, I'd give it to Kathy. For all the Garber. bending of her backwards and making sense of this script she had to do. I I think she was kind of like peppy and 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 cute. So like, okay, I don't know. Sebastian Cabot every day, all day, baby. I just felt bad for him because he was sad all the time. And even at the end where they're just like, did you have a good time? He's like, yeah, I had a good time. (laughs) Like, no, your spirit has been completely thrashed. Get out of that job. They don't appreciate you. Yeah. Um, And must other people see this episode? No, no, no. This episode should be like sealed in concrete and buried (laughs) underground and not open for another hundred couple years. Um, well, no, yeah, so this is where I will reissue the family affair challenge part two. <laughs> I will, uh, I will, please. I will, I will go along with you on that because I, I, I think that the original family affair challenge came out of, Hey, this is a really funny comedy that lasted many seasons. And we watch it and it's like, it's like watching like, you know, Peyton place. I mean, like it's a drama, <laughs> like, it's a drama. I- and so I guess this wasn't a drama. This was more of a, I, I, I hesitate to call it a comedy, even though it had laugh track. So well, it's it was also a because comedy. like at that time, like a half hour show has to have a laugh track except Peyton Place, which was a half hour show, but wasn't a comedy. I don't know. The rules are blurry. Um, but I do, if anyone has an episode that they think is, I'll even, I'll extend it. For 2.0 of the challenge, I will extend the parameters and say, good episode. Because now I, I think I understand that Family Affair will probably never have a joke that will will never have a joke. Yeah. Some, <laughs> so, some, season, some shows are like that, where we watch them and we're like, this was, this was a fine episode. I didn't really laugh, but it was good TV. Yeah, like Father Knows Best. You know, like, okay, yeah. that was... That was yeah, so I say just a good, like a good drama, some good cute moments, Bob, heartwarming. Barb, this was an eight point two out of ten. I know. Like this is this is the high bar stuff. This was, yeah, they went on is, yeah. to like an outdoor set or two. Those Thirty six, a fairyites really loved it. Um, Ugh. but well, we made it through. We, we made it through. Yay! What a way to come back. <laughs> Uh, next week is the seventies. I I like the idea of trying to do dramas, <laughs> um, but we'll see. Figure out what that is. Uh, I feel like we already did Streets of San Francisco. And oh that yeah, was... we did. Yeah, that was that was a drama. That was John that was a drama, honey. Jackson. Um, uh, I, 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 hate, I hate giving like, I hate giving the must have seen performances to performers that I'm just like they're cute. Or they're hot, like John Saxon or or Sissy. Yeah. Um, but literally, there was nothing else going on and in this Brian episode. Brian Keith wasn't even in the episode that much, so I couldn't even give it to him. It was in South America. Yeah, but check that George Clooney energy. It was interesting. I was getting the I was getting a vibe. Mm. Uh, I'm crazy. Hi. <laughs> uh, where can people find you on the internet if they want to talk to you about good episodes of Family Affair? I am only on, well, I'm on a couple of things, but the only thing that you really can find me on that's interesting is Instagram at Ethan K 55. Barb, where can people find you on the internet? People can follow uh, Barb Hardly on Instagram at, at Barb Hardly. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Barb Hardly, where I will, uh, basically I'm going through a whole bunch of junk that I have, like this Cyclops shampoo bottle, um, showing it <laughs> off. 
That's what I do on YouTube. And you can watch We're Here on August, on August, on April 26th, Friday night, HBO. Uh, Barb Harley might be on it for a total of maybe 15 seconds combined, multiple shots. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you to everyone for listening. Please rate and review the show in iTunes or wherever you listen. Um, please reach out to us, email must have seen tv at gmail.com leave reviews uh comment on the youtube let us know let us know where you are um tell me i'm beautiful uh thank you to acast for hosting this madness uh and thank you to jess for suggesting this episode which i still had a blast with yeah this is this is fun to talk talk about i mean look it's not dead eve plum in a bed but <laughs> well, you know, very little is. Yeah. Except for it's like a deleted not... scene from a very Brady renovation. It's not an uh, 8.2 out of 10. I'm absolutely. sorry. No, 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 this is not a comedy. Uh, but yeah, until uh, next time. Next uh, time. Gadget. We'll see you on must have seen TV, baby. Mm-hmm.